Hey everyone, it is Matt with today's devotional. Uh, we are in Psalm 4, and so I just want to invite you to grab your Bible, grab a journal, and a pen, and take this time to read that psalm before we dive in together. The first thing that we see when we begin to read in verse 1 is that the psalmist is calling God to answer him, uh, to hear his prayer. And uh, for us, that, that immediately shows us that this is an, a lament psalm. And we're going to see the plea in verse 2, but before that, we also just want to remember that the psalmist has called God his righteousness. Uh, who has given relief in the past. And so today, as we pray this psalm, uh, we're, we're leaning back on this God who has proved true in the past. The, the complaint that we have in verse two is, O oh men, how long? And this word, how long, is repeated, um, but it's a very common uh, phrase that the psalmist uses in lament. How long, O oh Lord? How long will you allow this to continue? And so we see that twice in this verse, which really just emphasizes uh, the cry. How long shall my honor be turned into shame? Uh, here we have a contrast, right? What is honorable is being turned out for shame. And I think that the honor here is perhaps the honor of the individual. This psalm is written by David, and so you can think of evil people who are coming against the king and uh, slighting the honorable things that he does for shame. But I think it also points back to God, who is his righteousness. They are shaming the God of righteousness. Verse 3, But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord, he hears when I call to him. Here, uh, David invokes the relational name of God, Yahweh, from Exodus 3.14. Uh, this is the covenantal God who chose Israel to be his own. And so this Lord has set apart the godly for himself. He's chosen them and the Lord hears when I call to him. Because he is the Lord's, the Lord will hear him. And that's what he cried out for in verse 1. And so he has this confidence. Because he has this confidence, he gives some imperatives in verse 4 and 5. He says, be angry, be angry with those who are coming against you, but do not sin. Ponder in your own hearts and on your bed and be silent. He's really calling us to remain faithful to God, uh, not to lash out in sin against those who are sinning against us. We can be angry, but we are not to sin against them. Not only that, but we're to continue to offer right sacrifices and trust in the Lord. You know, God is faithful to us, and so we remain faithful to Him. Uh, he is that relational God who has come into relationship with us, and so we are to trust Him. Verse 6, there are many who say, who will show us some good? You know, we're all out there looking for good. We're all out there looking for blessings. But where did those blessings come from? Lift up the light from your face upon us, O Lord. Here we remember uh, Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26, uh, where Aaron is giving this uh, blessing to the people of God, this benediction. And he says, uh, let the light of God's face shine upon you. Again, the relational name. And the result of that is that joy is in our hearts. More than uh, the, the wicked ones when their grain and wine abound. They think that they have joy, but they don't. They don't have true, lasting, full joy. And the result of that true joy is peace, that I will lie down and sleep. Uh, for you, O oh Lord, that relational name make me dwell in safety. Uh, here we, we remember what he said in verse 4 about in our beds being silent. And we can think of, of David, right, running away from Absalom, as we read in, in 2 Samuel, uh, not knowing that if when he lies down to sleep at night, that he will actually wake up in the morning alive. But here, because he trusts in the Lord, even the wicked men pursue him, he is able to have hope in that God who has made a relationship with him. And so as we apply this text to our lives today, it should be clear, right? that God has a relationship with us. He cares about us. And so even in our laments, when we cry out to him to hear us, when we cry out to him and say, how long God, 
You know, I'm at the end of my rope. I'm at the end. I have no more left to give. How long, Lord? Uh, that he is hearing those who he has set apart for himself. The other thing that we can do is uh, really stay true to these imperatives in verse four and six. We need to continue to love people. You know, we can be angry at them for what they do and how they harm us, but we need to continue to extend love to them as God would have it. And in verse five, we need to remain faithful to him. We need to love our neighbors, but also love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We need to trust in him for he alone is trustworthy. Let's pray together. Lord, you have put more joy in our hearts than um, the joy that those get from material goods. God, you have allowed us to lie down in peace when we go to sleep because we know that you are for us. That God, because of our relationship with you through uh, the life and death and resurrection of your son, a God that you care so intimately about us, that when we cry out, uh, you do answer. And so God, we want to submit to you. We want to offer to you uh, all of those things that trouble and worry us this morning, uh, all of those relationships that are difficult, all of those people who have harmed us. Uh, Lord, we, we lay them before you and we trust you. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, next week, we are going to be looking at Psalm 5 together. We'll see you then.